In this video, I want to show you how you can upload images directly to an S3 bucket and then retrieve them from the S3 bucket later, rather than having to go through your server to actually upload and download the images. And a benefit of doing it this way is that the load that you put on your server is significantly decreased because it never has to process image data and forward it to and from an S3 bucket. So one way of doing this is to upload the image first to your server and then have the server push that image directly to the S3 bucket. Then later on, you make a request for your image to the server and the server has to get the image from the S3 bucket and then deliver it back to the client. A different method is to instead post the image directly to the S3 bucket and then when you need the image, you get it directly from the S3 bucket and the server never has to handle the actual image data, which significantly decreases the amount of data transfer going to and from your server running your internal logic. This also makes it a little bit easier to start using CloudFront, a CDN that you can connect to an S3 bucket, so you can distribute your images globally and then users request the image from the location closest to them rather than from the location of the S3 bucket. There is a tiny bit of server code needed to make this work and I'm going to be using node to write that server-side code. However, this pretty much applies the same to any backend language. This is basically a three-step process where we first have to make a request to our own server to get a secure URL for the S3 bucket. So our server will have credentials that allow it to access the S3 bucket and it will create a secure temporary URL that it sends back to the client. The second step is that the client actually has to post the image data directly to the S3 bucket using this secure and temporary URL. And then once that is successful, once the image has successfully been uploaded to S3, the client should then tell the server that the request was successful and send any other bits of data that the user needs to provide. So if our file upload came with a description and any other details, we could then send that to our own server to store it in a database separately. So right now I have a really basic HTML file that has a form that needs to upload an image and it has an upload button. Uh, and then in my JavaScript, I'm gonna handle this uh, by listening for a submit event on that form. And then I need to get that file data that was added to the form in the HTML file to my S3 bucket. And the way this works is that first, we have to get a secure URL from our server to then post the image directly to the S3 bucket. And then once that's successful, once it's actually been saved to S3 and I've got a confirmation, I could then make another request to my server. So post request to my server to store any extra data. So the first step is to get that secure URL and that's gonna happen on the server. And right now I just have a basic express server set up. And what I'm gonna do is create a new endpoint that will allow my client to get a secure URL. And I'm just gonna call this S3 URL for now. And realistically, you'd probably wanna authenticate and authorize that the user is able to upload images, uh, but just a basic implementation, I'm just gonna use this to get a temporary URL. The next thing I'm gonna do is actually create uh, a new file on my server. So it's part of my server side code. I'm just gonna call this S3.js. And this is where I'm gonna put all of the code that connects to AWS and the S3 bucket and handles the generation of the secure URL. <laughs> So, so far, all I've done is imported the AWS SDK for Node into this file, and I've set up some variables to keep track of the bucket name, the region that the bucket exists in, the access key ID for the bucket, and the secret access key for the bucket. I'll get to those in a second. Uh, and then I'm creating a new S3 bucket object using these details. So really before I move on, I wanna be able to set all of these things up so we actually have an S3 bucket to push the images to in the future. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually create a brand new S3 bucket. And to do this, I just go to aws.amazon.com and sign into the console. If you don't already have an account, you should create an account and sign up. Then I'm gonna click on the S3 service in the console and that'll take me to all of my S3 buckets. And for this, I'm gonna create a new bucket. And this is just object storage where I can store a bunch of images in the cloud. Uh, and I'm just gonna leave this as US West 2. That's gonna be the region I create my bucket in. Uh, and I'm gonna call this bucket something unique, um, direct upload S3 bucket thing. 
I don't know. And then I'm just gonna add this to my list of variables so I don't forget about it. So I'm gonna end up with a bucket with this name in this region. And then while we're in AWS, we can configure this bucket. So we are gonna allow public access to this bucket. We're not gonna block any of the public access things because we need the web client to be able to add images to this bucket. And then we're gonna allow everyone to be able to get images directly from the bucket using the public S3 URL. So I'm gonna acknowledge that I'm allowing this bucket to be accessed publicly. It's not gonna be private. And I'm gonna leave everything else as the default settings. Then I can just create this new bucket. Once this bucket has been created, I'm gonna go back in because I have to configure a few more settings. So in the permissions tab, we have to go down to the bucket policy and actually edit this policy to allow anyone, anyone on the public internet to be able to get an image from this bucket. We're not gonna allow them to post or modify or delete. We're gonna require our server to be authorized to be able to do that but we are gonna allow anyone to be able to get the image that will allow the web client to actually uh, just put the image URL in an image tag and be able to display it on a web page. So to do this, we have to edit the bucket policy and we can actually go to the policy generator to generate this for us. So from the dropdown, we're creating an S3 bucket policy. Uh, what we're trying to do is allow, so we're going to allow uh, anything from anywhere to uh, get, there we go, get object. So this will be uh, allow to get a, a single or many images from the bucket. Um, and we're going to add the ARN of the specific bucket that we want to allow this for. The ARN format is ARN colon AWS colon S3 colon 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 and then the name of the bucket. So allow anything to be able to get images from this bucket basically. Uh, and then if we generate the policy here, it's just a little bit of JSON. We have to copy this. We can close this window and back in my S3 page, I can just paste this in. And this will now allow public read access of the objects. So we can save the changes. Oh, this actually gave me an error. Oh, because we're not allowing read on the bucket itself, we're allowing read on the objects within the bucket. Okay, so save changes, there we go. Just that slash star means uh, you can access the images in the bucket or the files in the bucket, but not the actual bucket itself. So we have the bucket policy updated that allow us to get images. Um, there's one more thing, and that is cores. So we can already get the images and download them from the S3 bucket, but in order for a web page to be able to display these images in an image tag, for example, it needs to have permission to make a request to a URL that's different to the one it was served from, and this is gonna be an S3 URL. So we have to edit the cause policy here, and in a production app, we would wanna edit the cause policy to only allow requests from our domain name, uh, but for development, it's easy to just open up this cause policy to allow get requests from literally any website. So anything can make a get request to our S3 bucket to get the images. I just have the cause policy uh, copied, so I'm just gonna paste that in here. Basically, we're gonna allow get and head so that uh, anything can make get requests and get the images. We're also gonna allow put because that's the method that our HTTP client is gonna use to actually put the image into the S3 bucket. And no one will be able to do this unless they have a secure URL, uh, but we do have to allow that in the cause policy. So if I save these changes, this bucket is now set up so that we can get images and post images to the bucket. So getting the images is gonna be really basic, really easy. Any one or anything should be able to do it. But adding a new image to the bucket is something that only our application should be able to do, that maybe only authorized users are able to do. So in order to allow put access on the bucket, we're going to make a new IAM user. So if we click on the IAM feature, we're gonna to have to create two different things. We're gonna to have to create a policy and an actual user. So a policy is a thing in AWS that specifies what type of things a user can do. So we're gonna create a policy that says this user is allowed to put an image into this specific S3 bucket, and then we'll create a user with that policy and our server will use the user credentials there to actually be able to connect to our S3 bucket securely. So the first thing we need to do, like I said, is create a brand new policy uh, the service we are creating the policy for is S3. We're gonna allow put access. So list read write. Going to allow put object for that specific bucket. So we put the bucket name in here and I'm gonna say any for object. And this is just saying uh, we're gonna allow something, whatever has this policy to add a new object to this bucket. And that's it, so we can go to tags, review. Don't really, oh, I guess I should add a name. I'm just gonna use the same name 
I use for the bucket. That'll make it easier to find later. And I'm gonna create this policy. So now I need to create a new user. And I'm just gonna give this uh, the same name as the bucket again. I'm just using the same name so I can easily find all this stuff later. And what we're gonna do is create a programmatic access user so that we get an access key and a secret key. And we're gonna give that to our server so our server can connect to the S3 bucket securely. So I'll go to permissions. And here we're going to attach the existing policy that we just made. And go to tags, I don't care, review. All right, and then we create the user. So I now have a brand new user and this is a user just for this application to connect to that specific S3 bucket. And I get a access key and a secret access key here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy both of these and I'm gonna go back to my application and I'm gonna create a .env file. And this is where I'm gonna store all of my secret details. So I'm gonna close that file now. And when I need to access those details, I'm just gonna do it through the environment variables. And then I need to npm install the .env library to make this work. So in my development environment, I'm gonna have a .env file. And then on my production server, I'm gonna actually have these environment variables set up on that server. I just need to import .env from .env and configure it. So I now have my S3 bucket set up in this region with this name, this access key ID, and this secret access key. So now my server should be able to create that secure URL that my client can then use to post the image to the S3 bucket. So here's the generate upload URL function that I'm gonna use. Uh, I start by creating an image name and this should be some sort of unique name that won't collide with any other images on the server. And this obviously isn't good enough, but I'm gonna come back to this in a second. Uh, then we specify the param. So this is the bucket name, the image name, and the expiration of the URL. So the URL will only be valid for a certain amount of time. We send that back to the client and the client has this amount of time in seconds to actually post the image to the S3 bucket before the URL expires. So I'm just gonna specify 60 seconds. That's how long the URL is valid for. And if it isn't used within that time, then the client's gonna have to request a new URL. Then we call s3.getSignedURL, uh, the promise version. And we're just saying we want a URL so that something can put an object to that bucket. And then once we have that URL, I'm gonna return it here and then we'll be able to use that from the Express server. Uh, so for this random image name, really any random value would be fine. But if we want, if we wanna make it a little bit difficult to guess what the URLs are gonna be, there is one technique I've seen that I'm just gonna use here. So we're gonna use the crypto library from Node and we're gonna generate 16 random bytes, convert that to a hexadecimal string. So it's gonna be a 32 hexadecimal character string that we're gonna use as the image name. And this will uh, give us a unique string that's really difficult to guess. So there's some level of security there so people won't just be able to uh, get every image from our S3 bucket. And now I just need to use this function in my server. So if I import S3, when I request that new URL, I'm gonna call and then just send it back to the client. So now from my client side code, when the user submits that form, the first thing I need to do is make a get request to my server to get that secure URL. So I'm gonna get the URL from the server and right now I'm just gonna console log it out to make sure that everything's working. So if I open up the console here, and something is already failing. Didn't import that correctly. Let's just fix that, okay, the server's running. Okay, so if I refresh this page, we should see the URL printed out here uh, when I submit the form. I actually don't even need an image there. I'm just gonna click upload. It cannot find localhost 8080 slash S3 URL because I don't know how to use Express. There we go. Okay, let's try again, click upload and we get nothing back from the server because I'm not awaiting that. Okay, now. Uh, the server failed because random bytes is not defined. 
That is right. I was supposed to create a random bytes function that equals promiseify crypto dot random bytes. Okay, hopefully that's the last mistake. Upload. Damn. Unknown signing version. Aha, uh -huh. it's supposed to be version four. Okay, that's the last mistake though, right? Yes, okay, cool. So, I'm just gonna refresh and do that again. If I click the upload, it's gonna make a get request to my server. My server is gonna make a secure connection to the S3 bucket to get a secure URL. And here is that secure URL. So now my client needs to take that URL and make a put request to the S3 bucket using that URL to store the image in that S3 bucket. And currently there is nothing in the S3 bucket. So if this goes well, we should be able to see an image here. Oh wait. So back in my client side code here, once I have the URL, I now need to make a put request. So we're going to take the URL and we're going to make a put request to that URL using content type multipart form data and we'll just specify that image file that's coming straight from the form uh, in that put request. And we'll wait for that to happen. And then once that's successful, we can get the image URL just by splitting the put URL on the question mark and getting the first part of it. And that should give us the actual image from the S3 bucket. So let's test this out and see if it works. So if I choose a file, let's see, it's a good one. And click upload, we get the URL, it sends it to S3 and this is now the link to the S3 bucket. Uh, if I refresh the S3 bucket, I should be able to see that that image is in there. Fantastic, and there's that unique name it has. Uh, and if I click on this link, it should, uh, well, I want it to show the image, um, but really because it doesn't have an extension, the browser will just download it directly, which kind of sucks. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna, every time an image gets uploaded, I'm just gonna display it in an image tag, uh, just so we can see that it's actually working. <laughs> So now if I go to post a new image, I should see that image just appear here. So I'm gonna choose that image again. Oh, here's a different one, upload, goes, it makes it to the S3 bucket and there it is on my web page. And if I check the S3 bucket again, there should now be two images in my bucket. There we go. So the final part of this, if this were a real application that I was working on, would be at this point, once the image has successfully been posted to the S3 bucket, I need to tell my server that that was successful and I probably have more data with my image, like a description or any other details. So I'd then make another fetch request to my server to give any other details after the image was successfully uploaded. So that is how to save an image to an S3 bucket directly from the client using a secure URL generated by the server. In a future video, I'm gonna build on top of this to actually set up a CDN with CloudFront so that your images get distributed globally and your clients request your image from the location closest to them.